Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice cubic equation. We have x cubed equals x squared plus 3x plus 3. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first one. I'm going to show you a graph as well as the solutions at the end. Okay. All right. So for our first method, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and use the cubic formula. Let's go ahead and subtract x squared plus 3x plus 3 from both sides. And then we're going to go ahead and set x equal to y plus 1 over 3. So how do you find that number that you're going to add? Because our goal is to get rid of the quadratic term. And you can basically determine it by the coefficient of x squared. The coefficient of x squared is negative 1. You basically just set up a different variable such as y, put the negative 1 here, and divide it by the degree of the polynomial, which is a 3, but then you just have to negate it. Make sense? That's how you can do it. So if the coefficient of a is b, if the coefficient of x squared is b, that is basically going to be y minus b over 3. Make sense? Okay. Great, now let's go ahead and plug this in. When we do, we're going to get something like y plus 1 over 3 cubed minus y plus 1 over 3 squared plus minus y plus 1 over 3 minus 3 equals 0. And when you simplify this, you're going to get a very nice cubic. And that's going to be y cubed minus 10 over 3y equals 110 over 27. Now, I wanted to put the constant on the right-hand side because that's basically how you solve with the cubic formula. Make sense? And to be able to kind of recognize what the formula looks like, uh, we're going to take a look at an identity, a plus b cubed. From this, if you subtract 3ab times a plus b, this gives you sum of two cubes. And by setting the a plus b equal to y and comparing these two equations, we're able to get a system of equations, but a solvable, easy system of equations. So if you look at the coefficient of y in both equations, one of them is negative 10 over 3, and the other one is negative 3ab. So from here, we get ab equals 10 ninths. And from the constant terms, we get a cubed plus b cubed is equal to 110 over 27. So this, this system kind of looks like cubic, but it's actually quadratic, if you cube AB and then substitute something from this equation, you're going to come up with a quadratic equation and then solve it. And at the end, you're going to get the following values. A equals cube root of 10 over 3 and B equals the cube root of 100 over 3 or the other way around or vice versa. I guess we could put, uh, is that the right way to write it? Anyway, something like that. So they could switch around too, right? Let's just use arrows to indicate that. And then y is just going to be a plus b. That's why the values don't really matter because at the end we're going to add them. So y is going to be the cube root of 10 over 3 plus the cube root of 100 over 3. But that's not the answer we're looking for because we are looking for x. And x is y plus 1 third. So what we need to do is add 1 third to get x from here. x is going to be the cube root of 10 over 3 plus the cube root of 100 over 3 plus 1 third. And since they all have a common denominator, I can write this as cube root of 10 plus the cube root of 100 plus 1 all over 3. Obviously, this is just one of the solutions. Aren't there any other solutions? This is a cubic equation. Well, there are, but we're going to check them at the end. Okay? And you'll see why. So, second method. Now I'm thinking, is there another way? Is there a better way to do it? Yes, there is. I can use a perfect cube, and that's going to be perfect. So how do I use a perfect cube? First of all, I multiply both sides by 9. And the 9 comes from, I'll tell you, where does that come from? If you multiply both sides by 9, you're going to get... 9x cubed equals 9x squared plus 27x plus 27. So what is the big deal about it, right? So here's the thing. This expression is 
very close to x plus 3 cubed. It's just missing the x cubed. So if you add x cubed to both sides, then we're going to get a perfect cube, which is going to be perfect. So here's what we're going to do then. We're going to add x cubed to both sides. And now the right hand side, hopefully you recognize this. If, because if you think about the binomial theorem, then it'll tell you, hey, this is x plus 3 cubed. That's what it is. Because it's a plus b cubed is a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. However you expand it, you're going to get that. Same thing. Now, since the right-hand side is a perfect cube, let's write it on the left-hand side. So it can become the left-hand side. And the left-hand side, let's write it on the right-hand side and also make it look like a perfect cube. It's, it is a perfect cube, but it's not perfect. I mean, it's not in the, like, it's not 64x cube or 27x cube. You know what I'm talking about? But it's still a perfect cube in the irrational sense. So now we can do the following. I can write the 10x cubed as cube root of 10 multiplied by x and then cubed. Make sense? That's why it's a little imperfect, but that's okay. Now we're going to do the following. Obviously, you can take cube roots on both sides and find the solution, but that's only going to give you one solution. Obviously, you want to look at other solutions as well. So I'm going to do this instead. I will bring everything on one side. Let's go ahead and pick the other side because I think that's going to give us a better uh, look. Anyways, I don't know. It just looks better. So we're going to get a difference of two cubes from here. And remember, a cubed minus b cubed can be factored as a minus b, right? And obviously when you do this, it's going to look like this, right? Minus x minus 3. And then the second factor, or uh, to make it a little better, because we're going to write the second factor based upon the first, let's write it this way first. And then this is kind of like my a and b. And notice that I'm expanding a cubed minus b cubed. So the second factor is going to be a squared, which is cube root of 100, x squared. I have to square everything, right? And then I'm going to plus a b. I'm just going to multiply them. It's going to look like cube root of 10x times x plus 3. And finally, I'm going to square x plus 3. That's going to be x plus 3 squared. All the signs are positive because we have a minus sign here. Make sense? And of course, we're going to set it equal to 0. The first one is easy because if you just set it equal to 0, it gives us the following equation. And then by putting the x's together, kind of like this, I think I can pull out an x and write it as cube root of 10 minus 1 equals 3. And finally, if you divide both sides by this radical, we're going to get 3 over cube root of 10 minus 1. But remember the first method. Wait a minute. Wasn't that very different? Yes, because we need to rationalize the denominator. So we're going to multiply by something. How do you rationalize this? Think of it as a minus b and think of a cubed minus b cubed. So it's going to be cube root of 100 plus cube root of 10, which is the a, plus a, a squared plus ab plus b squared. And then you're going to do it at the bottom too. But when you multiply these two things at the bottom, it's kind of like this is a squared, this is ab, this is b squared. So a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared is going to give us a cubed minus b cubed, which is what? Which is 10 minus 1. And in the numerator, we're going to get the following. And notice that 10 minus 1 is 9, so 3 goes into 9 three times. And yay, we got the same answer. This is the real deal, okay? Wow. What about the other equation, right? Okay, great. So if you go ahead and simplify this equation and check its discriminant, you're going to find that the discriminant is less than 0. Uh-oh. It's going to have complex solutions. Let's go ahead and check them out. All right, cool. So the complex solutions are going to look like this. Uh-oh, they are super complicated. That's why I didn't want to write them. I'm kind of lazy. But anyways, you get the idea. You can easily find them from the quadratic, right? And this is our graph. Isn't that beautiful? We have a cubic. X cubed, as you know, is going to be increasing all the time. And our parabola, they're going to intersect at a single point, which is the real value that we just found. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.